I'll, I'll take the hit for this one for changing everything last night. Yeah, at least you can't blame it on me this time. It's usually me that changes everything. Yeah. I didn't go anywhere near it. No, no. It's the... Uh, there's a sheet right there. That's the password for the... It starts with the same string yeah. of characters. Yeah, but if he goes on the Wi-Fi, there's another person no, no, using no, the no, Wi-Fi. <laughs> Try Conrad Guest. It's a house of cards. Yeah, you can jump on the Conrad Network it's called Conrad Guest. We're ready if you're ready. Okay. I'm trying to log into Rumble Talk. It's not happening. Yeah. So I'm giving up on the chat room. We'll just hang out on Facebook. Okay. I'm glad you love the behind the scenes, Liz. That's why you're all here live, right? Because you like to see us crash and burn and then get out of the car and wave. <laughs> We're okay. That's, that's really? Why, that's why you're here live. So, okay. Peter, I do not have control over your mic on your end, so if you don't want to be heard, Move. mute your mic. <laughs> if you want to be heard, mute your mic. Okay. Get it? Yep. Very good. What reverb? What reverb? Please explain what that means. Echoey. If you hear echoey, that, that, that's, that's not right. what goes on the air, so that's what it sounds like. Test so, one, two, three, yeah, four, she's two. hearing a double. Oh, okay. That's the sound. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hey, hey, hey. Test, test, test. Now, there's two feeds coming back from, there's two signals coming back into the system that you're monitoring. One's slightly delayed from the other. How could that be? Well, turn one off. I don't, there's only one audio line. And people are saying they're not hearing any problems. Okay, so the broadcast is clean? Yeah, everybody's right, been so saying So it's just that. her monitor. Yeah. I know what it is now. It's Remember in the settings how you had a line 2 and a line 4? Yeah. One for headphones, one yeah. for main? Yeah. That's why you're hearing it double. You can't disable that now, though, right? Because there's right. a restart. Right. Right. I don't know what that explains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's fine in the air, then I'm not yeah. going to... Nobody's complaining. further... Down the rat hole. Rat okay. Hole. Yeah, but they're saying it's all fine. All right. Okay. Well, if they say it's all fine, it must be fine. It must be fine. <laughs> if it sounds good, it, it is, is good. good. Just in my head, it's not. Just, but, she just has to hear a stadium effect. Right. 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 Five. Four. Three. Two. Hey! It's still Monday night. <laughs> it's been and, a, Monday night for like a half hour now, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, really, pretty much. And it's fall, too. Anyway, VoiceOver Body Shop is coming up right now. Our guest tonight is Peter Bishop, mm -hmm. an Englishman in New York. Yes, he is. And he loves it there, apparently, because he he's still he does, there. Because he's still there. <laughs> uh, we'll have an interesting conversation with him. We've got some news tonight, lots of interesting tech. And, of course, we'd love to get your tech questions. Paul Stefano is in the uh, chat room tonight. So we got all sorts of stuff for you. Thanks for hanging out. We'll be right here in a second on Voice Over Body Shop. Two men, twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place, George Whittem. The home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. 
voiceactorwebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. All right. Well, who's 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 rumor we in tonight? This is uh, Mr. Cipriano's uh, temporary quarters. Well, it's a permanent house with a temporary booth. Oh, okay. If, if anybody has had, ever had to order, a Studio Bricks booth will tell you. It you takes better a while. be patient. Yeah. His delivery date is somewhere in December. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He ordered it like um like a couple of weeks ago. Well, that's it, that. That's how popular they are right now. They're literally back. They're back ordered on making them. Right I figured now. they were just sending them by clipper ship. You know, <laughs> no, take a couple of months. They're very, very popular products. So he, we built them a nice moving blanket temporary studio, and it's it's doing the job. It's not soundproof, but it pretty much deals with the reverberation in the room. And that's really the most yeah. important thing. Might put a second coating of blankets on. Right. Knock down a little bit more reverb, but or, it's or working. Just, or just have Annie step, sit out the out, stand on the outside and try to catch all the sound waves. Yeah. They it's your typical in. modern home with zero soft anything in the whole room, right? It's all hardwood <laughs> floors. There's nothing on the wind. You know, it's yeah. very reflective. So okay. we, did, we did our best. Cool. All right. Peter Bishop is with us tonight, and he is waiting patiently by in New York City. Uh, and he is on Zoom, but uh, he still looks great. Yeah. Whether, whether he sounds great or not is a whole other deal. But we'll we're going to have out an interesting conversation with him about all sorts of cool topics. And we've got some tech. You've got some tech. I've got some cool toys that I've been playing with. And all sorts of other cool things. Hopefully, and, some of your questions, gang. Yes, we'd like to see your questions. Get to the questions. We're, we're purely in Facebook Live tonight. The YouTube Live was not cooperating. So if you have questions, well, you're obviously in Facebook already. So just put your questions in Facebook, in the Facebook chat. Right. Uh, that's the best place tonight. And uh, our faithful backup chat room moderator will catch them. That's Paul Stefano. Hey, darn well better. Thanks, All righty. Paul. It's now time for... Voice of a Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. And here is the voiceover extra news for September 24th, 2018. Tell a story. Story makes the voiceover message stick, especially when you make it personal. So what's your relationship with the voiceover copy you read? Kim Handyscience explores this in a recent article at voiceoverextra.com. We love story, she says. We swim in it, soak in it, eat it up daily, hourly even. So Kim suggests making the copy and the script personal to you. That way the script becomes your story. Kim relates the advice of actor LeVar Burton. Remember him as Kunta Kinte in Roots or as Geordi, that's how I remember him, in Star Trek Next Generation? Yep. Well, last year Burton was a keynote speaker at a conference for e-learning developers, and he talked about how storytelling helps to lock in a message to listeners. A specific method he suggested for getting into the story was to ask, what if? For instance, suppose the script for a weekly radio spot is about cheap chicken and toilet paper. <laughs> What's your story there? Well, you might ask yourself, what if, to imagine those prices really making a difference in your life? Seriously, suppose you're a millennial who's just left home, or you've got a new family and your money is going towards diapers or you're on a fixed pension. Your what-if world-building will help your message connect on an emotional level. Make that story your own. Our voiceover clients entrust us to tell their stories to their clients, Kim says. It's a big responsibility, and to ply our trade well, we need to understand both the needs of the messages and the message receiver. Tell the story. You'll find more on this in Kim's article. 
now at voiceoverextra.com. Go there to find virtually hundreds and hundreds of helpful VO how-to articles and career resources. All righty. All right. Tell the story. Because that's what we are as voice actors. We are storytellers. Indeed we are. Like we're gathered around the bonfire. <laughs> saying, yes, cheap chicken and cheap toilet paper. Anyway. <laughs> but in a compassionate way at the same time. Compassionate about cheap chicken? I, okay. <laughs> well, whatever. So what's up in tech with you this week? Well, what's up in tech is uh, the internet has been a real pain in the you-know-what tonight. It's the Russians. I'm literally trying to view our rundown right now, and it's trying to connect to Google. So uh, I'm having a little trouble <laughs> viewing yeah, the Read show. it on mine. Mine's working. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, scrolling down to my, to my notes about what I'm going to talk about here. There it is. Oh. Um, <laughs> speaking of internet... Um, a lot of what I've been dealing with in the last week has been regarding getting internet, accessing internet, and where are you going to get it, how are you going to get it. And one of those products that has come to mind, speaking of Joe Cipriano, is a product that uh, Joe actually found and brought to my attention called the Skyroam. And, uh, you know, a lot of us have hotspots on our phones. That's very common nowadays where you can turn on hotspot on your phone and be connected to the internet. We may need that tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's a good backup to have. My phone doesn't, most of your iPhones do. However, that's a problem when you're traveling abroad or in other countries because the roaming charges will kill you. They're just insanely expensive to browse, not browse, roam on your phone. And if you get one of those little jet packs or one of those other gadgets, same problem. They're locked to your account here in the States. Well, what Skyroom does is it provides for you this cool little hockey puck sized router that runs on 4G or LTE or even 3G, whatever's available in that country, whatever's available in your region, and it will connect to that system and now provide up to five of you connected on Wi-Fi, an internet connection. So it's, being, it's able to jump from network to network, country to country. It doesn't matter. As long as there's something available, it's going to connect to it. And for what do you pay for that? It's about 150 bucks, I think, for the, for the unit. And it's about $10 per day flat rate, which, of course, 30 days, that's $300. This is not something to be using every single day of the week. This is something that you use on demand when you need it, when you're traveling. And for 10 bucks a day, it's a killer deal. Bottom line is, we've talked about this before, but now Joe has actually used it in uh, France and I believe Italy. And he said it was pretty much flawless. It worked everywhere he needed to use it. He was even doing Source Connect over this thing. Um, it rarely, he said one time, it ever gave him trouble. So what does that mean to you? It means if you need something when traveling overseas, this could be the thing. I recommended it to uh, David K. I haven't heard if he bought it. I, I need to check in with him. He's been paste posting on Facebook, so I know he's using the internet. And that he's alive. Yeah, but uh, oh, he's going from uh, he's going from Switzerland to Russia this week, so um, I, I recommended it to him as a secure way to get internet while he's in Russia. Yeah. I figured having your own hotspot is probably the best way to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> but is it secure? Who knows? Yeah, I mean it's it's as secure as the ISP that you're connecting to, so hopefully it's secure enough that it's going to provide him some way to get on the internet while he's traveling. Another thing I've been wrestling with a little bit or experimenting with, I haven't fully committed yet, is using what's called Project Fi for my mobile service. So I, I've been using Verizon for a long time, and LA Verizon is really strong. Um, but it was getting, it was really expensive, and I thought I'd try something new. So Project Fi is Google's cellular or mobile phone service. And what it does is it bonds or connects together or switches seamlessly between, I believe, is actually more accurate, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint. So basically everybody but Verizon. And uh, it supposedly gives you seamless call jumping from Wi-Fi to these mobile networks and will move from one to the next. It's worked okay for me. It has not been as strong at my house. I live in a canyon, and T-Mobile, uh, actually Verizon, really pretty much rules the roost where I live. So it's not been as quite as good. But everywhere else I've used it, it's worked pretty well. It, the only downside, and I will, I will warn people, for those of you who are considering this, 
If you're a Google Voice user and you have a Google Voice phone number for your business, like I do, and you want that phone number to be able to forward and make calls from your Google Fi phone using your personal phone number, not going to work. I found it the hard way, and it's a pain in the neck that I can't now seamlessly make calls and receive calls through Google because I have two different systems that are both Google that won't work together. It made me want to bang my head against the wall. So I'm having to now use Skype to make my business calls on my mobile phone. It's not Skype? seamless. No, yes, I know. It is not seamless, but it's working for now. I, I may change my mind and bail on this whole thing and go right back to Verizon. I haven't committed and left Verizon technically, but my phone number is ported over to, to, uh, to the new system for now. So we shall see. But if you're looking for alternatives and you have a simple lifestyle, no dual mobile numbers, Project Fi could work for you. It's six, bu- uh, six I'm sorry, $10 a gigabyte. Until you hit six gigabytes. Right. After that, they don't charge you anymore. You, they just say, we're not going to charge you anymore. We'll keep giving you internet. It's pretty cool. All right. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens. What do you got over there? You got some Well, toys. we're going to talk about this one in a minute, Ooh. too. So. Awesome. All right. We got lots of stuff to cover tonight, and Peter Bishop will be with us very shortly. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. Wow, this is VOBS? This is John Bailey, the Epic Voice, and you're watching VOBS.TV, Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Newfoundland. Hey, how do you think about your voiceover career? Are you frustrated with your lack of success, wishing you had more auditions and bookings, and making more money? We all have thoughts like, I'm not good enough to be doing this professionally. I'm just faking it. I need to join the union as soon as I can. I'm too old to get booked. I can't get started until everything is perfect. I'm going to kill you, whoever says that. I hate auditioning because I never book anything. Sound familiar? If only you could change your mindset and get rid of these ridiculous rules. Well, VO2GOGO's David H. Lawrence the 17th has just what you need. He's completed a 21-day journey with nearly 100 voiceover and on-camera talent, just like you, called... Believe 2018, and he recorded every single session, meaning you can take this journey now, too, at the pace you want and change things for the better. Get the success you deserve by destroying your limiting beliefs and replacing them with powerful, productive, enabling beliefs, and do so on your schedule. Here's the link. Go to the Go Get the 25 Hours of Video and Audio and daily chat logs and more, and begin your own journey. That link is vo2gogo.com forward slash believe. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash believe. It's ridiculously cheap, and it's ridiculously effective. Once again, vo, the number two, gogo.com forward slash believe. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, Go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. All right, we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop. You know, 
Although it may not seem it, there are two guys on the, on on this planet that actually understand the unique, completely unique environment that is a home voiceover studio. For you know, take for example, Mr. Cipriano here, who's uh, you know, I gotta have a booth. You wrote a paper on small booth acoustics. You and I have worked on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of home studios. Other guys, who are they? Well, I mean, a lot of people have a background in, you know, radio and you know, they have backgrounds in music or maybe they're music engineers. There's a, you know, maybe they've done this or that. But Dan and I have dedicated our energy to this one field with blinders on practically for a really long time. And so that's, you know, Explain gives us a, a unique skill set to solve your problems. So if you want to get help from the likes of us, where can they find you, Dan? Well, they can find me right here at homevoiceoverstudio.com. There it is right there. You can go over there, see all the cool stuff that I can do for you. I do consultations. I will analyze your audio for 25 bucks. Just drop it in the specimen collection cup. I'll give it a listen. We'll talk. If you need a lot of help, we'll see what we can do. And if you want to talk to George, you go to boo, georgethetech.com. Or if you like those short nerdy ones, georgethe.tech. And I've got a menu of services on there. Some of it's scheduled services, one-on-one. -on -one. Some of it are send your files. I'll send back the results. I can design things, troubleshoot, the like. So go give me a look over there. And uh, I'd love to give you a hand. All righty. So what do you got going on over there? Well. The famous and most talked about mixer face. I yes, why? I, 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 I have a mixer face. Yes. Because um, I was playing around with it this afternoon because mm -hmm. another company, a Danish company by the name of DPA. Oh, yeah, baby. Uh, they make Danish Pro Audio. Is Danish. that what they stand for? It just says DPA microphones. Well, let's have to Google that. Right. I met these guys in Philadelphia, and they wanted me to try some of their microphones. Mm -hmm. uh, I have their shotgun mic in my studio right now. Yeah, it sounds dandy. You know, and that it's and true. that's saying a lot for me because mostly I, I think it's a microphone. They yeah. all sound the same, and there mm -hmm. really isn't a big difference. This one is just so clean and so crisp, above a lot of other stuff. Mm. And ain't cheap, but mm -hmm. but they also have this little cool thing. Uh, it also has. They also gave me a headset mic to check out, and I used Ooh, it on a that? webinar this morning, yeah. and it was that was sweet. I bet it was nice. Was it that was, an ear set where it sits it, over it, your it's ear? It's over your ear, and it was just like there. Room. I didn't have to worry about finding the microphone. It was like, hey, look at this. All right, I've had those in the past, but they were really inexpensive ones. Right, this one was not a cheap one. Yeah, uh, but they also have this little thing, and this is a. Uh, it's a it's on a little gooseneck. It's a it's a very focused um, what they call a pressure gradient mic. Oh yeah, um, but an active one, and uh, it works on XLR even though it has these little tiny things on it. And I plugged it into a mixer face, and that is plugged into my telephone. And I can use Twisted Wave on here, and it it will pick it up. And I recorded some stuff with it. I'm thinking if you've got a mixer face and one of these guys, yeah. talk about miniature and easy to use, uh, say with a Harlan Hogan Portabooth Plus or Portabooth Pro, uh, placing it in there in the right way, you've got yourself a killer road unit. Yeah, that thing would be ultra portable. Right. Do you have any idea what the model of that mic is by chance? This is, uh, I'll have to go find the box, which is buried under a pile of other things. But Yeah, I think it's a, one of those modular base things right yeah. where the mic right. threads yes yes and, and you can change right out off. different capsules so right there, my, dpa is all about modular mics with different setups for <laughs> lavalier headset they, they and they're known for this is what they're known for they're known for micro micro microphones like tiny little tiny microphone. that is that little tiny thing at the very tip is the microphone mm -hmm. um and this is really what they're known for these guys have perfected it i was talking we've talked about it in the I brought it up in the past quite a while ago before the show. I mentioned these guys, their mics are used on film sets all the time. Right. And one particular that really impressed the heck out of me was um, the, the movie Les Miserables. Yes. The, the theatrical production. Yeah. The, all the singing in that film was done with mics like this. Yeah. And the mics are actually 
on their costume, oftentimes outside the costume like this. So how did they shoot that? Well, some you remember in the movie, uh, if you haven't seen it in a while, there's these extreme close-ups of the singers. Just, for, just to get it out of the way. It's basically, for, yeah, they cropped the it mic It was a out. bit much, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then anytime there was a medium shot, they digitally painted out the mic with CGI, yep. frame by frame, so they could hide them. But that's how good these mics sounded. They used them to have live performances, singing in a feature film. Yeah. It's really amazing. Un unfortunately, Russell Crowe's worked. Uh, but, uh, but a bunch. <sighs> he did his darndest. He, he tried his best. I'm sure not, he filled the seats. Uh, well, it was like, <laughs> no, I mean, I can see him as Jean Ver, but I don't hear the voice being Jean Ver. Doesn't it's, quite work. Huh? No, it really didn't. But anyway, yeah. But that's the DPA mic, and that's going to be fun to experiment with. I look yeah. forward to hearing kind of. You know, I'm having real all sorts world, of fun with it. Uh, well, I use these things in the real world, yeah. so that's that's the really cool thing about it. Cool. So I'm writing a review on that, right and on. Uh, and I actually started a new website. Oh yeah, called VoiceOverGear.com. Ooh, a and store? It's it's no, it's not a store. Oh, it is yeah. a uh, it is a resource where I am writing reviews of different products, and if I don't think it's very good, I'm not writing a review of it. Mm -hmm. Only stuff that I think is good enough for you to use. And if you go over there, uh, there's a link on there that'll take you right to different vendors, and you can shop different prices. And if you want one, you can get it. Go okay. to voiceovergear.com. Okay, awesome. All right. Is that one that you may end up putting up on that website? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. absolutely. You know, it's in the high-end stuff. I mean, this yeah. stuff isn't cheap, but it's really good. Yeah. So, anyway. I, I did. I did a... Quickie review today about the uh, Sennheiser MK4 Digital. That's their USB MK4. Right. I, I had and, it uh, last week, and you yeah, got you it, it this week. Yeah. yeah. I if it's just up on my Facebook page on George the Tech. If you want to give it a give it a look, see and a listen. I actually uploaded a wave file of my review as well, so you can hear just the raw audio that's picked up by the mic. Um, you know, I didn't have other USB mics to shoot it out against. It may be time for us soon to do a new shootout, yeah. monster USB <laughs> shootout because we did one at Wovo. Was it two years ago when we yeah, did that? Yeah, yeah, and we did one here not long after I arrived here in California. Yeah. Well, we had that the the Wovo was USB specifically. Right, right. We and had we, like eight or nine we, USB, right, and we had that booth that was hard to move through the Tropicana. <laughs> yeah. That was fun in itself. Yeah, but uh, you know, we might be due to to do to do another USB. It's, you know, USB mics for me are becoming a really hard sell because we have such great products like the like this mixer face that are so much more versatile and have much better headphone amplifiers and everything. USB mics have a really hard time duplicating the quality you can get with one of these, yeah, really. Absolutely. I mean, if you if you really want something that you can toss in the bag, Apogee mic, it's a good option. Um, I think they have the mic Apogee mic plus. Yeah. For, vo for yeah. folks that want some more bells and whistles, yeah, it's has got a headphone, headphone jack, jack on it. It's got goes 96k. Yeah, like, why would you record it 96k? You know, but almost never for voiceover. Right, work. but you could. You it could. It gives you the ability to, if you absolutely yes. positively had to. Yeah, you probably won't, but you, you can. Okay. So anyway, uh, but what else is there? Anybody? Did anybody post any questions? Well, Paul, that we Paul be Stefano posted to? a question. Oh, cool. And and he said. Um, Saw your, your digital review or your review of the MK4 Digital. Does this mean USB mics are no longer taboo for pros? Well. <laughs> well, I, I guess I preemptively answered that, right? Yeah. I, I, they are not taboo for pros, like in, used in the right context. Right. In the right environment. Yeah. I mean, USB mic quality, really not a problem. I mean, they've gotten the mic capsules or the mic capsules themselves and the mics the main part of the mic, the capsule, the body, they're being taken from already established designs that are working, right. like the MK4. Great mic. Then they're melding in, like in the case of the MK4, the guts of an Apogee system. Right. Probably they're, I don't know, but probably taking something very similar to what's inside the Apogee mic. The preamp, the AD converter, all of those bits, they're melding them together and putting them in the MK4. So you're getting really high quality stuff out of that mic. It's is it going to fulfill your need? It's going to fulfill your need like any other mic would. Right. It's not a shotgun mic. I haven't seen a USB shotgun mic yet. Somebody mentioned when I was doing my review today, when's that going to come? A USB shotgun mic. I haven't seen one yet. 
chances are the first one we see is probably going to be con- pretty much consumer grade stuff. I don't yeah. I don't expect it to sound very clean and quiet. Right. That seems to be where most USB mics tend to fall down is their quiet their their level of hiss. Right. Self noise like the USB the AT2020 USB. Yeah. That one's pretty noisy. Every yeah, time some, I hear that one. Yeah. I go, People say, I don't, I don't think it's noisy. Well, you're deaf. Yeah, if, I mean, it's, it's, you haven't heard one makes a lot of hiss. You haven't stuff. heard a good mic, if, yeah, if you think that. I yeah. mean, it's an acceptable mic. Right. It's a great first microphone. It's a get your auditions banged out at home, but that's about all that mic's good for. All righty. All right, well, Peter Bishop is standing by incredibly patiently. Uh, we might actually let him get on the show there in a couple he is. of minutes. And he's still everybody. moving around, so everything yeah, that's seems good. That's much He's better. alive. Zoom yeah. still works. The internet's working. All righty. Yes. All right. Well, well, we'll have an interview with an English accent coming up right after this. Cheerio. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Hello, hello, everybody. I want to talk about our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements. They're the creators, purveyors, creators, supporters of, and the sellers and purveyors of. Any other words I can throw in there? That works. That's good (laughs) enough. Source Connect. Source Connect is an amazing software you use to connect between your studio and other pro studios around the world. Real time. This is streaming audio, real time, back and forth, a la Skype, but in very, very high quality. And it's a standalone application, not like a lot of the other systems out there that are running on a web browser like Chrome. This is a standalone app. And what makes that really unique is that when your your systems update and Chrome updates and things like that start changing as they do on their own, Source Connect is going to keep on running. In fact, if you have kicking around a Power Mac G4, like a G4 PowerBook, I'm talking about a 12-year-old PowerBook. You can fire that up, install the right version of Source Connect, and be connected to other studios. That's what's so great about Source Connect. The software is a standalone app that is, you know, it's completely separate from what's going on, the craziness over in the Chrome universe. So if you want something that the pros are using that's stable, that is really going to elevate your game, then you want to give it a try. Go over and get a free 15-day trial from Source Elements. You don't need to have a little iLock dongle. It works without an iLock on Source Connect standard. Give it a shot right away and give it a test to try out one of their echo tests and see how you sound through Source Connect. I'll be right back with Bish right after this. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did! I did hear the voice of a body shop! Beat old body shop! All right, what can I say about our guest tonight? I, all sorts of things. Maybe something nice for a change. Well, okay, well, he's a very unique individual. He's a British national living in New York. He's an Englishman in New, New York. York. Oh. Okay, a corporate refugee, a rock music aficionado, a talented voice actor, and now president of World Voices Organization, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. Um, And like most Brits, never at a loss for words. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Peter Bishop to voiceover Body Shop. Peter, how are you? Thank you for that wonderful description. I I don't know whether I'll be able to live up to it. (laughs) We'll try, though. Well, we'll we'll find out, shan't we? Uh, you, you, I've, I've got a Union Jack up there, just just in case people. I'm all da, messed around. Da, da. It's over there. Yeah, that's it. Alrighty. It was um, a present, well, a tea tray. Yes. 
Uh, you're not to be confused with the actor Peter Bishop. You're the voice actor Peter Bishop, the guy who was on Fringe and a couple of other things. Do you ever oh. get get email from people saying how much they loved you in Fringe? Or yeah, I've had a few people that have difficulty separating, you know, reality from fantasy, and the guy really messed up my Google foo. Really. <laughs> I'll bet. It's also very freaky when you turn on the television. It was the sort of thing that I might want to watch, and it's like. Ooh, it's my name. It's weird. So, yes, it uh, messed me up for a while. So why don't we talk about you for, for a couple of minutes, about, you know, your background, because it's a fascinating story. Uh, and, uh, no, just walk in front of the camera. I don't I'm care. Cross the camera. Just cross the camera. <laughs> okay. not loud enough. Okay, all right. Well, that was, that was a good take by our technical director to just... Uh, How's Go that? to Is Peter. Okay. All right. Now get Peter again. There we go. All right. And now George can sit back down again. We just needed rouge. the monitor a little bit louder. <laughs> uh, anyway, so where are you from originally? Originally, I'm an airline brat. Um, and I ended up working in the air transport industry uh, for a big multinational that dealt with uh, tech and communications and stuff like that for uh, 25 years. Uh, got to see the world, traveled around, climbed up through the organization, spent time uh, in the training department, which was interesting. I was designing, developing, and delivering training courses. And as you climb the tree, the corporate BS gets thicker underfoot, unfortunately. And um, in the late 90s, they asked me to come over to the States, and it suited me at the time to do so. Um, so basically I've been here 20 years, but I left the corporate world in 2004. So, yeah. So I did very little for a couple of years, then sort of got into VO about 2006 at a very, yeah. What did you, start. what'd you do in those two years between something about mixing music tapes? And oh no, the, the mixing stuff was actually something I'd done a long time before in the UK. I, ah. Uh, I'm a failed musician, but I love music. I can't play. Nothing to wrong with much. that. <laughs> but I enjoy it so much. I ended up as the guy that would mix all the local bands and that sort of stuff. So I knew my way around cross micing techniques, phantom power, mixing desks, compression. So I knew that from a hobby point of view. Then I became an engineer uh, and then always was tech. So I carried. The, that technology part with me throughout and then with the whole corporate presentation and training stuff um, I was giving presentations at very high corporate level up to um, government minister level that sort of thing so bringing all these skill sets in I had a running start with the tech and as far as the corporate stuff went I can I can sound credible when I want to you know <laughs> So, so were, you, were you like voicing recorded material or you, you were doing live presentations or what? Oh, presentations. Um, the training stuff we did, we hadn't got into e-learning or distance. It was all classroom. Um, but the presentations were all to um, various people in the air, air transport industry. And in some countries, that means you're dealing with the actual government as well. So, um, yeah. It was an interesting time, but it gave me, um, I think, quite a wide skill set. And the hobby stuff that I started with at 17 um, was just a foundation because my father was an engineer. Uh -huh. So um, I think he gave me my first microphone. Um, hmm. Well, so that, was, that was how that's what I brought to the party in, in 2004. Well, uh, how did you uh, discover voiceover then? That's a special year to me, too. That's the year I moved to L.A. and started discovering the voiceover world, too. Man, 2004. Yeah, it, it's, you get into it and you think, where have these bloody people come from? Mm. <laughs> have they always been here? <laughs> um, okay, very briefly, I was in a very supportive family environment where very much it was follow your dream. Um, my stepson is a successful actor and i've been taking him to auditions since 2002 2004 well when i had free time after 2004 i was taking him into the city for his auditions coincidentally i've now been i'm now going back to the same rehearsal as uh, audition rooms 
but I got a taste for it then. The, the world opened up to me uh, about this whole acting malarkey and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And as I've got no memory, and I have to read from a script anyway, voiceovers seem logical. Makes you get sense. fed up, I, I, I must admit. Um, for many years, I learned the nondescript grunt when at the checkout in Kmart or in a diner, when people say, oh, I love your accent. Wasn't it a shame about Princess Di? <laughs> uh, so <laughs> you have to learn to grunt in a nondescript way so they don't know where you're from. All right. So I buried it for a long time, but I was told repeatedly that I should do it because, um, I, as I say, I can sound convincing sometimes when I want to. Can you give it a, a, an example of that? Uh, I talked you into putting me on here, didn't I? <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you just go into corporate mode, which is um, not to be complacent about it. You mustn't ever do that. Everything's a performance. So you take the script and, I firmly believe one of the biggest things with, especially with corporate, who am I and who am I talking to? Where is this being pitched? Is this going up or down? Is this uh, between two silos in the same company? Am I trying to strike a rapport with uh, a manager who's my equivalent because I want him to buy internally? Or what is it? So I'd had lots of experience in I say, walking into a room and judging it. Um, so it was bringing that skill set to scripts. Okay, who is this going to? So, yeah, it's it's it came easily to me, and I hate to say that because so much of the other stuff that I do now didn't come with that level of ease at all. Um, I mean, yeah. some what, of it I still can't do. <laughs> well, what kind of stuff are you specializing in, and what kind of work you've been doing? A um, lot of e-learning stuff, corporate, obviously. E-learning is my bread and butter, really. Um, I stumble across promo and commercial. I don't seek it. I don't put myself out into the UK market because I don't want them buggers to come over here and square my pitch. You know, So I'm not <laughs> going to go to the UK. <laughs> Too many Brits over there, so yeah. they can have that. Just don't come here. Um, but occasionally you'll get uh, commercials and promos for UK outlets that are produced by American companies. And with ISDN and being on the East Coast, I just work from a time zone point of view. So it may not be the voice, it just may be I'm available. Yeah. So that's where the niche marketing of an Englishman in New York works. Right. Because, oh, yeah, he's English and he's here mm. or in the same time, time zone. And he's got ISDN. So sometimes yeah, it's a matter of just being available, I guess, like being available in a way that makes their job easier. You're, you're like, it's funny, right? It's convenience. Right. Yeah. You, you have the right accent in the right time zone for those well, jobs. With uh, West Coast, that there isn't a business hours time window between London and LA. Yeah. It, it just doesn't they work. don't overlap hardly at all right it's, no, <laughs> they really it, don't it is very early tomorrow morning there so, anytime we've had folks on from europe that we try to get on the show they, they, those they, that were are will dare do it you know they're on at like, three in the no, morning it, it's four o'clock in the morning if you're on mainland europe at the moment yeah <laughs> absolutely so so you're probably doing a, an occasional jaguar commercial for a local jaguar dealer and stuff I like have, that I, I local ones absolutely um Six people have come to me and said, oh, I heard you on this latest Jag ad. I have to state for the record, it's not me. <laughs> Find out who it is. <clears throat> <laughs> well, you can, well, but of course, you can I've always claim credit. <laughs> you know, it's like, yes, why, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. you know? No, you know? I can't do that. I, d I didn't do it. So uh, I'm not going to take the credit for it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, you know, you could always do it for the Mini Cooper dealer, since it's really not you on the on the, on the Jaguar spot. Any <laughs> anyway, uh, so so you'd have to do a little bit of niche marketing, I would imagine, with that with that voice. Absolutely. Um, I mean, there's so much stuff that uh, I I can't even. You know, I, I the agents now seem to send you send you everything, and it's like. I don't, I'm not going to sell tractors to a Midwestern farmer. It, it's just not going to work. Um, 
so you have to learn to filter through what's there and just say no 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 oh that looks interesting i'll have a go anyway i haven't done anything today so uh you mix and match sometimes it's worth throwing the curveball but most of the time it filters itself out um if they ever use the word sophisticated in there yeah i'll give it a go okay so um how do you do your marketing then i mean do you are you like are you talking to english companies are you talking to american companies and saying hi i have a very classy voice or what what's what's part of your process most of my marketing as i say i i let the uk do its own thing i I don't want to uh, compete with thousands of other people like me i just tens of other people like me is fine um production houses uh primarily that's my target because everyone needs a tame brit in their back pocket that's what i always tell them um you send the demos you explain what you've done um you set a low expectation it's almost like saying i know you may only have something for me twice a year but if you have enough companies giving you work twice a year that adds up um no one's going to give me a steady stream if I'm just fishing in the American pool. And that's that's fine for me. I've got, uh, um, I work every day and any more and I'll, I'll have time to sit back and do things like this. All right, very cool. We're talking with Peter Bishop who joins us from out in Long Island. And uh, if you've got a question for him about how we do this as marketing, but we're gonna get into some more intense stuff in just a second here, throw it in the Facebook chat room tonight Mm -hmm. where Paul Stefano is standing by and he will relay your question to us. Uh, You know, it's great having you with us tonight, Peter. Um, One of the things that you're doing now uh, that you've been involved with for a while, thanks to me, uh, is you're now president of World Voices Organization. (laughs) Thanks or no no thanks. thanks Yeah. (laughs) Or what? Um... Yeah, or somewhere in the middle. There are some times when I I, 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 I hang my head. Um, yes. Um, well, World Voices, whatever. Brit as president, uh, we got uh, Canadian as vice president and a smattering of others. Um, it's a wonderful organization. Um, as you know, it was started with the, the, the founding four who had this vision. And what they hadn't worked out is they shouldn't have put term limits in place. So we've had Dustin was the first president, Dave Corvo, the second. And now I'm the first president that wasn't one of the founding four. And it shows that the organization has grown. Um, If I have a a name for my um time as president it's going to be putting the world in world voices um we want to reach out more cross borders we've made massive inroads and i must say most of that is down today um we're getting into the uh spanish speaking uh latin and south american uh areas we have a strong representation on the board from that area and we're getting down there um really trying to bring on board the spanish speaking community um once we start getting outside uh, the americas the job is harder we have members all around the world um active members out in the, the philippines and europe australia and i could just list countries but i'm not going to um it's to build the communities there as well uh we need to have a very global attitude we're endeavoring at the moment that everything we produce is in english and spanish next on the list will be french but this these things are going to take time um as you know we're all volunteers and we're all running our careers as is so um we can only do so much but i like to think we're making small steps in the right direction all the time um our job is to advocate for everyone not just north americans um and south americans yeah. and latin americans yeah. well the, the, lots, the, lots yeah. of germans and yes. french well it's what's fascinating is the different economic climates 
and processes in a lot of these different countries. That you know the the pay scales are different. The way people are uh, do their jobs is different. I think in some South American countries, you have to be licensed to be a voice actor. You know, you have to take <laughs> continuing ed classes. Is that like a fish license? Yeah, not quite. <laughs> This is where I get a hunting license. Um, um, I actually don't find that idea that bad, actually. <laughs> Do tell. Uh, uh, I think it's very easy, and a lot of people are trying to make it easy for people to get into the business before they're ready. Um there are a lot of people selling the dream, but the, this isn't unique to voiceover. It's acting. Uh, the big scam, what was it in the 70s and 80s? Uh, modeling, you know. Um, come to me, I'll take your pictures, I'll get you on an agency roster, and $5,000 later, there's some hopeful young girl in Podunk, Illinois, that all she's managed to do is lose her parents $5,000. Um, yeah. We have to be mindful of the fact that this hopefully for people that are starting that the end goal is a career it's there are some people that want a part-time job but this isn't pin money this isn't just to do a 50 dollar ivr job and then say i'm a voice artist because that does nothing for the industry um, it's great for the ego it's great for chatting with your friends about but Anyone that's going into full-time VO has got to have a target of paying the bills and paying the mortgage or rent or whatever, making the car payments. It's a real job and it takes real work. You're not going to buy that. There's no magic pill. A lot of these guys, it's just pyramid selling. Um, they are serial entrepreneurs and they've moved on from one business to the next. Oh, look, VO looks like a fertile ground now. So let's get into that. Lots of fish ready to be caught. Um, it does upset me because I think it confuses newcomers and they don't know what to do. So hopefully World Voices, because anyone can come in uh, as an associate member, even if you've just got a passing interest in it. And we will give guidance as to what is legitimate, what is not legitimate, um, and free advice. The, the mentoring program is, is wonderful. You can come in as a, I'm just thinking of VO, and have a couple of chats with seasoned pros who will give you their time for free and, and set you on the right path, not by ad, uh, responding to a banner ad on Facebook or something or it will crop up on your Google searches because you have been searching. And next thing you know, you've got a get rich, rich VO scheme being advertised to you. Um, this, I think it cheapens and damages the industry. Um, and yes, somebody got upset with me the other day because of it. So uh, I don't care. No, well, that's fine. This, this is an <laughs> open society. You're allowed to say what you want to say, unless the script says something different. Yeah, um, <laughs> don't correct the script. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's and, and it's one of the things that we, we certainly try to do at Wovo is it, it, it's advocacy, but it's also activism, uh, letting people know what it is, what's the reality out there. Uh, and but most importantly, not so much even to the our members who benefit greatly from some of the stuff we do, but. Our, our one of our true missions is to make sure that people who hire us realize that voice actors are professionals who are well trained, and if you want a good voice actor, hire somebody who's the member of, of World Voices organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, which, which is one of the reasons we started Voiceover.biz, because that's our searchable directory of uh, of our professional level talent that's been vetted. They are guaranteed professionals. They know what they're doing, and uh, and it's important uh, that you know producers are finding out about it. I think somebody found this today, as a matter of fact, and uh, was emailing around. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what he was talking about, but uh, it's it's interesting that uh, you know we see these things, and 
you know, that, that we're there and we want people to know what professional voiceover is all about. And so I'm, I'm really glad that you've taken on this, this, uh, this burden of being president. Uh, what, what have you found so far as being president that you like? <laughs> um, I might have to come back to that one. Um, right. <laughs> but it, it's more about the difficult questions though, isn't it? I, I, I okay. L let me make one thing absolutely clear because I got into another tussle on Facebook the other day over it. I love community. I think um, the two things that really made a change to my voiceover career was, was the community on uh, the, the VOBB, a, a traditional old bulletin board, and Fafcon. Um, because I was just a basement dweller before that. Um, and the commu community is incredibly important, but I, I think there are a few too many communities now. How many Facebook groups are there to do with voice? Oh, it's, uh, it's I don't know billion, how many are there. Billions and uh, billions. Yeah. Um, but the question that does come up, and what I find is the most difficult question that's ever asked is if there's a newcomer that wants to get into the business, the question is, how do I do it? Because we are up there saying you, you don't go to the unscrupulous pay to plays you don't go to the snake oil salesman coaches or demo producers and you don't go to fiverr and, and that sort of thing it, it's one it's like a mantra but then the comeback is quite legitimately then what the hell do we do um it's an incredibly different difficult question um and all of these things can actually be used but you have to use them and not allow them to use you. There are lots of people who are making money on Fiverr, but they have a very specific attitude towards it and they put, they, and they sell it, that's the problem. Then it looks attractive to everyone else who then starts charging five bucks and wonders why they're not making any money. Um, if you can transition out of that, maybe use it as a stepping stone. I don't know the answer. Um, the whole thing makes me want to wash, you know, <laughs> deal with fiber um but some people are making a success out of it or use i know i know one um vo personally who used to advocate for them but then moved on out of it and had this epiphany that all these cheap clients aren't going to pay my bills so he transitioned his career and he's doing very well now so they're like quicksand once you're in it's difficult to get out but what if you can you'll be okay but it's a difficult question we, i don't want to be in the position to say this is what people shouldn't do without having a concrete this is what you should do yeah. um a lot of it is a lot of research um talk about newcomers i haven't been in the business that long i'm a corporate refugee so I will say to anyone, you work hard, it's going to take you at least five years to start earning a living. I mean, a proper living. Um, and then you can build from there. Um, and I went through that period from sort of 2006 to 2011 or so. I was thrashing around in the sh shallow end, just trying to find the direction, trying to learn lessons, learning what to do and what not to do. Um, but since, uh, for the past seven years, it's just been, you know, all the lessons learned have been applied, but you have to learn the lessons yourself. You cannot pay someone to teach you the lessons you should learn by yourself. Otherwise you don't value them. Right. I think. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's a matter of, there are certain professionals, I won't mention any names, uh, but who know certain things that you gotta know. Uh, but people who have these marketing programs and stuff it's like you know it's all available if you go to the public library and how to do it it's not anything new so that's pretty important you want to talk one of these people that says i did it you can do it i spent ages pouring through the internet researching reading and reading not going on to facebook and saying how do i do it can you give me a client list <laughs> we've seen it yeah pretty amazing Can I have a client list 
<laughs> yeah, I got my I got your client list right here, you know. Anyway, we're talking with Peter Bishop, who's president of World Voices Organization and uh, and a pretty successful voice actor because he learned his lessons. And if you've got a question for him, again, throw him in the chat room. Paul Stefano is standing by to take your call or at least to take your question. And we're going to pass that on to him in just in just a minute. Um, one of the things that Wovo does every year is we go and we hang out at the Tropicana uh, for a weekend. What's going on at WovoCon this year? Sorry, I, I was just taking the water. That was for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it's Vegas. I can't say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> Seriously, no. Um, we have we're developing a wonderful program. We have both uh, some big names from uh, the likes of. Bob Bergen doing master classes, plus a lot of peer driven um, sessions, um, names of people and um, people, you know, that they're friends, you know what they're good at. Um, some of the e-learning experts will be there telling you about what they do, how to do it. I'll be doing something about going to the studios where you may not be used to going to them and that sort of thing. Um, but go onto the website, look look at the list of presenters. I mean, I'm on the spot, I should have put the list in front of me. I didn't. I I have um, I have it memorized. I know it. Oh, you're good. I, I know you're two good. guys that are going to be there well, presenting. Well, this is why I'm not an on-screen actor, because I can't memorize anything. I need a script. Yeah. Went through that. And guess what? It doesn't get any better as you get older. <laughs> as, as I've discovered as being on stage a few times in the last few years. Uh, yeah, no, George and I are going to be there. Uh, it's also a great community event. I mean, as far as the voiceover community, I mean, there's stuff you can learn, but like at some other conferences where there's all these set, uh, presentations, most of the activity and the fun and the good stuff at the, at, at WoboCon goes on in the lobby right. <laughs> or, uh, around the bar, uh, where some of the most intense conversations are. And it's a great way to make friends because boy, there are a lot of people who are, we just create such great friendships in this business. And, uh, and WovoCon's a great place to do that. I always say to people, there are, there are generally sweeping statement. There are two types of uh, conference. There's the one where you uh, go along to different panels with the usual suspects. And there are others where it's more interactive. There, there are workshops and sessions. Um, WorkerCon follows the, the, the smaller, you're working one-on-one -on -one with workshops and, and, uh, regular teaching sessions. Not, we have a couple of panels. Uh, I think we've got the agents doing a panel and everyone loves agents. You know, <laughs> we always hope they're going to get, sign me up, please. <laughs> of course. Uh, so yeah, it's much more of a, a community driven thing. And I just want to underline the fact that with all conferences, you only get out what you put in. You don't don't turn up and say, well, come on, give it to me. You've got to work with people. You've got to interact with people. Um, as you say, working in the corridors is an amazing thing. Most stuff happens there. You go to a session, you enjoy the session you catch the presenter afterwards and have a coffee with them or something. They'll be more than happy to, to spend time with you. It, there's no separation between the attendees and um, the session leaders and that sort of thing. Everyone's in it together. Um, it's the Wovo community. Um, it's not an us and them situation at all. Right. And we talk about the organization and things that have to go on and uh, you know, the business of what goes on. Uh, any any final thoughts on on one last statement on what you think the state of our industry is, and then we'll we'll, get, we'll go to a break, and then people have the chance to ask you questions themselves. Okay. To put it simply, I think there are far more people making money from VOs than by doing VO. At such a level now whether that's a, a p2p that's taking a large rake um someone selling services overpriced and useless there are too many people trying to get their hands into vo's wallets 
Um, now, as I say, from either a, a big multi-million dollar corporate level down to I'm a VO with two years experience, I'm going to sell classes. Um, that's, I think, I, I think we're our own worst enemy in a lot of ways. Um, we say how there are not enough jobs and the rates are going down, but we're encouraging people to come in all the time and charge low rates. So who's doing this? To a certain extent, we are doing it to ourselves. So we have to educate everyone about it. Ooh. All right. That's the way it should be. <laughs> All right. Peter Bishop is our guest. Uh, we're going to get take your questions in just a couple of minutes here. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. Skittles, taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The National Zoo. <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stain. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. All right, one of our sponsors is the one and only amazing Harlan Hogan out there in Chicago land. I was in Chicago a few weeks ago, and... I couldn't get together with him. But the one time I met him was in Chicago. Nice guy. But the best thing about Harlan, aside from him being a nice guy, is that he has this great online store for the best voiceover equipment out there. You know, we teach. You don't need a whole lot. But once you're really established, there are certain things that perhaps you really should have that make your life a little bit more convenient. For example, headphone hangers. You don't have to hang them on your head like I do with George here. All you have to do is go over to voiceoveressentials.com and check out this thing you put right onto your microphone stand. <laughs> Makes it easy to hang your headphones on there. Uh, I know it sounds silly, but trust me, how many booths have you been in or I have, have I been in where the headphone has nowhere to go? Right. It ends up on the floor half the damn time. <laughs> it actually is really helpful to have a place to hang your it headphones. absolutely is. Uh, and they've got them over at voiceoveressentials.com. They also have the super light shotgun mic shock mount, uh, which I actually use on my 416, mm -hmm. which I'm actually using on my DPA shotgun mic this yep. week while I check that one out. Any pencil mic will fit. It, and it's great. You just put it in there and futz with the rubber bands that are in there, or the and, and it, it, keeps, it keeps it shock free. Uh, and it's not really expensive. They also have the Vox Pop Stop for all the all-metal pop filter, the three-way adjustable desk stand, mm -hmm. which is really nice for using on the uh, the Portabooth Pro and Portabooth Plus, yep. and most importantly, their ABS, the adjustable boom stop, or as I like to call it, the adjustable boom jock. Mm -hmm. So in case your 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 boom stand starts to fall over, it will hold it up. That's right. Important. That happens a lot with most music stands trying to hold, or mic stands holding your big heavy condenser mic. Absolutely. The booms sag. Right. It's insurance. Mm -hmm. It's insurance on that expensive microphone that you've bought. So go over to voiceoveressentials.com, and the best way to do that, of course, is by hitting the uh, link at the bottom of this page, although we're on Facebook tonight. But if you go to the VOBS.TV page, there's a picture of Harlan Hogan talking into his Portabooth Pro. Click on that. It'll take you right over to VoiceOver Essentials. Peruse all of the great items he has. Aside from these accessories, there's books, there's mics, there's the headphones, there's all sorts of stuff at VoiceOverEssentials.com. Go over there right after this show and buy him out of all the stuff he has in stock. And he will thank me later, and you will thank me later for sending you over there because you'll get the best stuff. And not only that, if you're not satisfied, which is basically impossible with the stuff he has, he stands behind it. So uh, if it doesn't work for you, you can send it back. 
All righty. Harlan, you have been our sponsor for darn near close to eight years now. It'll be eight years That's in March, right. if you can believe that. Uh, and we appreciate it. We'll be right back with more from Peter Bishop and all your questions right after this. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. All right, and we are back with Peter Bishop. <laughs> Taking notes, obviously. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions here from a bunch of people. Are you ready to take them on? Uh, yeah, as long as I don't want the truth. Uh, well, <laughs> they, all right. As my dad says when he does his museum uh, tours, he'll say, You want the truth? Anything <laughs> you want to know, just let me know. I'll make something up. All right, let's <laughs> go. go. All right, first question. Um... He says, uh, let's see here. Dave Rosa asks, what are your thoughts about Waves plugins for voiceover? This one's, this is a tech question. Oh, that one snuck in there. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I mean, since we read it, I'll answer it real quick. Okay. Um, is Waves the deep breather? Yes, they do make the deep breath. Have you tried anything them. like that? Them. No, I hate deep breathers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't find one that works properly. Yes. Learn to breathe. That helps a lot. <laughs> well, I, 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 people really do try to automate breath removal, and it, it's very difficult. Some people breathe in a very kind of consistent, metered way, and maybe for some projects it can work effectively. I mean, Waves plugins, they're one of the biggies. I mean, if you've tried voiceover recording and engineering, at some point somebody's probably recommended one to you. I personally find that the majority of the plugins out there that come with your software do almost everything you need, if not everything. And so adding on a lot of third-party plugins, probably not really worth your while right now. So right. I like yeah, I like RX. RX6. I, I love the mouth de click. Yeah. I that, use I use audition and I just avoid making mouth clicks. You know, you, you <laughs> if you're able to do that at the source, more power to you. Always man. do it. Uh, physically, because all of these things are yeah, physical. You're ones. absolutely right, of course. That yes. is the right way whenever possible. It certainly sure. will save you trouble on the other end. Yep. Uh, Thomas Machen has... A yes, lot. yes. Tom Machen asks, he says, Volvo is a pretty respected organization that has a huge host of professionals that can teach and are teaching. Well, I think we've established that. Uh, is there a possible way to get a stamp of approval when someone is ready and certified to begin a career in uh, in coaching an area of VO in the future? That's uh, an interesting one. It um, sure is. The only, the only thing we will certify is the tech side um, because that's quantifiable. To become a professional member, I'll try that again, to become a professional member, um, again, it's quantified and it's the jobs you've done. We do not judge people's voices. Um, the quality of your audio, the amount of work you've got. Who am I to say whether your voice is ready for prime time? That's a judgment call. The only people that make that call are casting directors and agents and people like that. People with checkbooks. Um, I've heard some people on air repeatedly that I think sound awful. And I've seen, uh, I've heard demos of people who have never got a job that sound wonderful. We do not judge people's ability to do it from a, oh my God, Gilbert Godfrey gets work, you know, and who would, who would have guessed that? That's um, right. On so, an award-winning show, mind you. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, so to actually, we have codes of practice. These are quantifiable. We have tech specs, which are quantifiable. I, I'm not going to say whether someone's got a good voice or not. That's That would be arrogant, I think. Well, and we certainly don't do that. Yeah, and we do certify studios. George and I know about that because yeah. we're the ones that do it. Well, we don't certify them. We approve them. Yeah. yeah. Neither of us are PhDs yet. So, <laughs> but that's, uh, that's empirical measurement. Yes. You, you, you can... You can hear echoes, you can see a noise floor, you can hear it sometimes. Um, but that's easy to judge and easy to measure, and you can quantify the results. Right. Um, everything else is so subjective. Yeah, and, and, and certifying coaches, I mean, 
Everybody's got a different style. I mean, how could you possibly do that? As long as they're they're charging appropriately. I mean, you, you take a, a a coach that's doing something more than going through the numbers. You'll run into personality conflicts. I know some coaches who are wonderful that I would not want to spend half an hour in a teaching situation with them. Um, different people have different ways of learning. Different coaches have different ways of teaching. As long as you're getting value and you're progressing and they work for you, as long as they're not just recycling a bunch of stuff that you can get up free off the internet, then, then fine. Yeah. So yeah. I find that a lot, a lot of coaches sometimes they may be trying to recreate you in their image as mm. opposed to really understanding who you are and what your voice is like and what you can succeed at. And my God, man, you don't sound British enough. Try harder. <laughs> <laughs> <Aye>. <laughs> We got a question right over here. We on do. The sofa. Yes, we actually have. We have a live studio audience tonight. Uh, an audience. <laughs> an audience. <laughs> Gerard McGuire is with us, who's been looking forward to meeting you, Bish. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll definitely see you at the at the conference. I'll definitely see you there, as an Australian voiceover, one of the world voices, and uh, hopefully be able to help you guys. You know, with your outreach to Australia. I'm, I'm pretty well connected over there, so I can hopefully do that. Great. But oh, great. I was uh, actually, Dan has uh, has covered a lot of the questions I had. He ha has a habit of doing that. He just jumps Sorry, in and just, asks what is probably happens, the obvious so. question. But um, I was just following up on that coaches, and uh, I was thinking about the uh, World Voices Wovo giving people some um, comfort if they are going to go to a a, a a coach, like you were saying, you know, someone that's been doing it for two years that suddenly says, oh, I'm going to sell my services as a, a, a as a voice coach, that it might be helpful for newbies to, to know that there are people there that uh, are creditable, that are honest, that will charge a reasonable rate. So, I mean, I think there could be a way of quantifying that, and it might be worth something that we could look at. I, I think the, the best way, and the way it works at the moment, is we have free open and confidential conversations on the Wovo Facebook group. So people can ask pointed questions there. And I, I think even if people go off and um, have private conversations about it, I think the recommendations from another member is probably worth its weight in gold. And if a conversation can be had about if someone may ask, I've seen this program that's available, uh, from a coach, blah, 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 has anyone got any opinions? Hopefully they'll get some comments, some feedback. Um, but again, it's, it's difficult for us to, in the same way we can't say good VO, bad VO, it's very difficult to say good coach, bad coach. Not so much the, uh, whether they're uh, a, good, whether they're, they're a good, uh, good coach or not, but do they have qualifications to be able to coach? That's my point. Every time this argument comes up, um, there are some good coaches who have never been successful VOs in the same way that, uh, what's the one the example people use? Tiger Woods has a coach. I know it's probably about a 10-year-old example now, but Tiger Woods' coach isn't uh, an ex-pro whatever at his level. Um, I've heard wonderful reports about certain coaches who have never been a VO. And I've had terrible reports about successful VOs who can't coach for Toffee. So what are the credentials? Um, do we fall into that, those that can do, those that can't teach? No, I think that's a ridiculous statement. Uh, do you need to have been a top level VO to teach someone VO? It's debatable. I think that could be argued either way. I think there would be perfect examples of either case. So credentials, what are credentials? Um, if someone has worked with the Royal Opera House or whatever, <laughs> would they make a good voice coach. They're a, a trained singer. They know how to get the best out of singers. Can they transfer that skill over to voice? 
probably, but are these voice credentials? So I think it's a minefield, actually. Yeah. You know, I, I would think that probably the best way to determine who's a good coach is who are their clients? Who are the people mm. that they've worked with that are successful? And if they can't provide you with those, perhaps they're not somebody you want to work with. You know, interesting. You know? I mean, that's one way to vet. It I mean, it's, it's, certainly it's, it's is. gotten me the, a lot of the clients that I have gotten is yeah. because of the history of the clients I've gotten. Right. If you look at my credentials, I've done film mixing. I've done this. I've done that. But I didn't spend 20 years in a recording studio recording voiceover. You know, so it's 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 sometimes we we come to our clients from a different direction and we come in from a different angle and right. You know, it's yeah, it's it, it's a difficult question and that one that there probably isn't a concrete right answer to yet. Yep. All righty. Uh, question from Chris Sharps, Mr. Whitham. Or is that Chris Sharpays or Sharpies? Sharp. I think it's Sharps. <laughs> okay. I like to go with come it. up with the most ridiculous pronunciation possible. Uh, Peter, what percentage of your work do you find is landed from agents? And he goes on to say, I tend to find that what auditions I receive from them is rarely in line with my British accent. I'm on the East Coast too, but do you find being in New York City is advantageous from an agency perspective? So how's the agency booking ratio going? Okay, I have two New York, specifically New York agents. Um, overall, I would say 20% of my work comes from agents. And I would say 5% of my work is actually actually necessitates me being able to hop on a train and going into Manhattan. It's very little. I, I could move and it wouldn't make a big impact on my career. Most of it I found is time zone um, and having connectivity. I have ISDN and I know they're one of the sponsors, but I love my Source Connect standard, which I think will be taking over. It's best investment I made. Well, basically, I had to because one of my big production houses was kicking ISDN out. Um, so proximity to New York, I think its major influence on me is the ability to have my tagline, an Englishman in New York. It doesn't sound quite as good. An Englishman in New York, well, 50 miles down out Long Island. It doesn't quite have the same ring. Um, so apart from that, uh, and from the marketing and branding point of view, my actual physical proximity to New York isn't that important. The amount of work I get from my New York agents is absolutely minimal. And the amount of work I get from agents in general is about 20%. Apart from the work I've, I source myself, most of the other stuff comes directly from production houses. All right. All righty. Thanks. The one and only Bill Lord has yes. a question. Yes, Bill Lord. Question for you, Peter. You said you came from the corporate world. How were you able to leverage those experiences to find success in VO? One thing people forget is that being a VO is a business. Um, mm -hmm. It's not glamour. It's not being an actor. Um, a lot of stage and screen actors have a manager that deals with all that stuff. We don't. Um, well, some do. Um, in the corporate world, I was dealing with projects... 1995 million dollars spreadsheets that were longer than a roll of toilet paper multiple currencies uh delivery schedules project management i work with pert and gantt charts all that stuff it just sits in the back of your brain so um business skills negotiation skills um the ability to walk away from something without feeling regret about it because they didn't meet your requirements for the job. Um, to be able to argue the point. I mean, I've employed so many subcontractors over the years for airport projects. Um, it's just learning how to deal with people on a business level, not as a flaky, I'm a VO. Let me speak for you. So, that helped, uh, really. I mean, decades doing that sort of thing, working with people, working with budgets. Um, my whole prem, the whole thing about putting these projects in, it has to be on time and in budget. And that becomes almost a mantra 
that's in your psyche. And that's just how you approach any business you're in. So yeah, it's business acumen. I don't know. It's, I did it long enough that I don't even have to think about it. it it's helps. just an attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Peter, it has been fabulous having you on. Looking forward to seeing you in, uh, in, in about a month and a half in Vegas for, uh, for Oh, Robocon. yes, we had a little panic earlier when we're looking at the stuff we need to have ready for <laughs> You're panicking six weeks out. Boy, it must be a heck of a list. <laughs> <sighs> well, no, I was reflecting someone else's slight, no, not panic, slight concern. That, <laughs> okay. It's only six weeks away. I yeah. won't mention who. <laughs> she knows really... who she is and she's in the chat room right. and, she, and, and she and she's very good at what she does which is yes. and it's actually been amazing because we've we've had a new staff really organizing the, uh, the the convention this year and they've done a great job and picked up the pieces and uh we're gonna have a great time hmm. it's gonna be, uh, be a lot of fun we are yes. and it's vegas so we won't tell anyone right exactly by the way, Facebook and Instagram don't work in Vegas. There's a there's a firewall. <laughs> <laughs> so you're fine. Literally, the firewall. It's like in front of the mirage. It comes <laughs> comes up every every hour or so. Anyway, Peter, thanks so much for being with us, and good luck with all you're doing. And thanks so much for taking on the reins at uh, Wovo and uh, for being you, which I think is the most important part. I can't be anyone else. You know <laughs> that I I can't play that game. All right. Well, just thank you guys for having me on. All right. I just continue to be good at being you. All righty. Thanks for being with us. All right. Well, we got to wrap things up here in just a second or two. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. And you're going to learn a lot more if you stay tuned. We'll be right back. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we are back to say mm -hmm. goodbye. But before we do that, a couple of things we got to cover. Like, for instance, next week, next week on this very show, Melissa Motes will be joining us from Las Vegas. Vegas, baby. Speaking yeah. of Vegas. Yes, where the, she, ha, she and her, her husband have a nice studio there, and she teaches, and she's very successful. And we'll talk about her career, and we'll talk about what she teaches. Mm-hmm. And we'll find out what goes on in Vegas mm -hmm. if she could, if she's allowed in to tell. In that context, we can share. That's right. <laughs> uh, on uh, October fifteenth, October already. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Uh, Adam Werner will be with us. He's a great audiobook narrator based in Colorado. Yep. I've been to his studio. I helped him design the place a bit, and uh, we'll get maybe a little feedback as to how that all went and what it's like doing voiceover in your garage. With a whole family of little kids running around. <laughs> well, hopefully they won't be running. Well, maybe they will be running around. While that would we're be great. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, on 1022, uh, Bill Ratner, one of the all-time big voices here in Hollywood. Big voice in a lot of ways. Yeah. Big personality, big voice. The whole, like, he, he's been involved closely with AFTRA and now SAG-AFTRA for years. He's font of knowledge. Excellent. It's going to be huge. Along with his daughter, who is also getting into the business. Oh, yes. she's Yeah, she's been uh, working at it for quite some time. Curious to hear her stories, yeah. too. Uh, but, and what it's like to grow up underneath his, uh, That's right. his fame. Her name stuff. is Ariana. Yes, yes. Uh, on 11-5, we're going to have a live concert here. Oh, boy. We have our good friends Rosie and Brian Amador and their daughter Elisa. They're going to be here. Singing in my backyard. We're going to have a backyard <laughs> cool. concert 
And we're going to broadcast it live here on Voice Over Body. Because why show. not, man? We, because we, we can. It's our show. Get over the heck we want. That's right. You know. So, and we help raise money and do things like that, which is also a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any donors this week? We I think do. we do. We do. Let me pop open the donor box. We got donors. Mm -hmm. We got donors. Oh, I can't sing that because then uh, the copyright uh -oh. uh, police will come after me I'll from Herman, David Letterman. Maybe that'll help. Isn't that David Letterman yeah, show that yeah, does yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here they come. And we've got people including the illustrious and amazing and numerous, as I'm stalling, I'm stalling, I'm stalling, yeah. uh, Tracy H. Reynolds. Thanks, Thank Tracy. You, Tracy. That man <laughs> is helping us out every single week with donations to the show, which is really, really kind. Thank you. Elizabeth Holmes. Oh, up in San Francisco. Thank you, Elizabeth. We love you, Elizabeth. Great to hear from you. Very nice um loading 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 look at it. it says loading that way i know it's working right it says the word loading right it's getting there isn't that nice <laughs> what's going on here tonight well take our word for it many wonderful donors which gmail will not permit me to read to you tonight so i apologize to all of you others who have donated to the show right. but um we get a lot of support it's a way that we can fill in the gaps of funding. And if you want to sub subscribe by sending a buck a month or whatever amount you want, you can do that it on the helps. website. Or just send, when you hear something that really helps, just pop us a little bit of something. We'd really appreciate it. It helps keep the show on the air. Yeah. And we're also going to be, I've, I've been issuing uh, our voiceover body shop Tech Talks, mm -hmm. which is a, uh, a short little bit of us talking about some sort of tech thing. So if you can't take the entire hour and a half, although why wouldn't you? Uh, you can uh, you can watch just ten minutes of George and I talking tech because that's, right. that's why people come here in the first place. And Andy uh, Kaufman, another one of our wonderful oh, donors. Thank, thank you, thank you Andy, Andy Kaufman. Uh, Patty Gibbons, Eric Aragoni, who's a thank name you. we've been saying for a very a long, long time. time. Yep. Amanda Fellows. Thank you, Amanda. My dad. All right. Thanks, Dad. Brian Page. There's a lot of names in there we haven't read in a while. Um, just because we didn't get to read them last week. Shelly, Shelly Avellino. Tom Pinto. Oh, Tom Pinto. Trey Mosley. Uh, Phillips Sapir. I'm going to read a bunch because we haven't read them in a while. Trace, there, that's Tracy was last week as well. Andy Coffin last week. So, yeah. Thank you. Very, Thanks. very, very appreciated. All righty. Uh, once again, if you need help with your home studio, if you want to talk to George and get it done right, they go to georgethetech.com. And then if you want a different take on things, head over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. Because not so much of a different take. You and I agree on how it all yeah. works. No Personalities, you know? That's right. We have know? different ways of doing things. We have different jokes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, different ways of looking at things. I'm doing a VO Extra, voiceover extra webinar this week. Yes, you, may you have are. heard about it, but if not, it's it's for audiobook production. If you're doing, if you're getting uh, asked to narrate your own book for ACX, I'm going to teach you how to record it, edit, and master it correctly to save you a huge amount of time. And you can still sign up. Just head over to uh, voiceoverextra.com, right. and that's where you'll find it. Right now, the show logs this week. Mm -hmm. Are going to be automatically generated supposedly yeah that's supposedly what's going to happen although we'll have to wait and see after we get the video up on youtube but youtube now has the ability to transcribe the entire show and we will have that transcription available on our youtube channel right. so we're, we're giving our long <laughs> long with us for a very long time loyal uh transcriber jack de Golia. jack de Golia some some downtime as we see how that works out and we really appreciate all the time he put into it which was yeah. enormous yeah uh let's see if you uh you want to listen to the podcast you can get it anywhere mm -hmm. anywhere there's podcast on right. itunes stitcher we're on podbean and you can't watch the show you want to listen in your car while you're driving you know between Padunk, Missouri. It's not Padunk. in Illinois. Um, <laughs> Padunk, Padunk, Padunk. Yeah, and if you're taking a long trip, you can listen to the, an entire show and go, God, that's fascinating. If you like Instagram, I finally made an Instagram account for my business at George the Tech. I, just because I guess I kind of have to. Yeah. So there, there'll be pictures and quips and stuff from studios I've worked on. So All go right. check it out. Yeah, if you want to be live in the studio, like. Gerard McGuire was tonight. 
You can just uh, email us at theguys at vobs.tv and say audience in the subject line, and uh, we might actually let you in here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, show us your booths. That's right. You know, here we have Joe Cipriano's booth. His temp booth. A temp booth. Which is doing fine for him for, for the time being. Because Thanks. he's Joe Cipriano. But yeah. I mean, the guy does great in the backseat of a car recording Spock's spots. Right. So I think he'll be okay yeah, <laughs> with our temp re- studio. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. So we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Mm-hmm. VoiceOver Extra. Uh, Source Elements. VO to go go. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. Uh, so we'd like to acknowledge... The Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Oh. Thank you. Uh, our producer, Catherine Curden, for getting us great guests like Peter Bishop and this great lineup we've got coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack Daniel was not in the chat room tonight. He was b- waiting for a desk or something. <laughs> uh, so Paul Stefano Paul. did a great job tonight Thanks, Paul. Uh, in the chat room. Uh, and uh, Sue Merlino, our amazing technical director, Who's actually getting the hang of this? This system. show was tight tonight. <laughs> yeah, it was. was. This show not tight. It Once was, we got it on the air. Yeah, yeah, really. It just took a little. And that wasn't her fault. No. That was my fault tonight. But that's a whole nother story. Uh, thanks again to Jack DeGolia for all his work on the show notes, and Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. We thank you for your patience, and we thank you for joining us, and we thank you for loving the voiceover business. Uh, we're here to help and make sure that. You get it right, because when it sounds right, it is right. And we're here to help you do that. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Witta. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.